In a previous video, I showed you how to set up flight modes in Clean Flight and Beta Flight. Today, I'm going to show you something that builds on that, but it's a little bit uh, cooler and more complicated and way more powerful, and that is in flight adjustments. In flight adjustments lets you modify parameters of the flight controller using switches on your transmitter. And the most uh, fundamental thing that, that in-flight adjustments are used for is adjusting your PIDs in flight. I'm going to show you a system that I use to let me adjust all of the major PIDs, yaw, roll, and pitch, P, I, and D, using th just three switches on my transmitter and just two aux channels. And that's the real magic thing. But before we get into that, let's talk about the basics of in-flight adjustments and how they work. The first thing you need to know about in-flight adjustments is that there are always at least two channels used with in-flight adjustments. The first channel determines what parameter is being adjusted. The second channel determines what direction the parameter is being adjusted in. So for example, we could have one switch that controls whether we are adjusting P, I, or D, and another switch that controls whether P, I or D is being raised or lowered. Now there's a common misunderstanding about how in-flight adjustments work. Some people imagine that the way in-flight adjustments work is that I'll select the parameter, like I'm gonna adjust the roll P gain, and then I'll turn this dial to turn it down or up. And it would be so cool if it worked that way, wouldn't it? Because you could just, especially on the Tyrannus with, with these guys here, you could just slide your P gain up and down, find the sweet spot, land, save it, it'll be so cool, but it doesn't work that way. The way it actually works is like this. You have a switch and that switch controls whether the value is being increased or decreased, incremented or decremented. So I'll select roll P gain as the parameter I'm adjusting and I'll flip that switch up and now the P gain is going 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5. And in fact, if you have a beeper on your copter, which I don't have one on this copter, this is a Cheerson 117 2S brushed micro. I just finished building this, and I'm just using it for this example. There's no buzzer on it. You'll hear it actually beeping. It'll go beep, 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 and that's indicating one notch of a value being increased. And when you're done, you flip it there. And when you want it to go down, you, now it's decreasing, 5.0, 4.9. A problem with that is that with in-flight adjustments, you never know what the actual value is, and you kind of just have a vague sense of how much you've actually increased it. And this can be a real problem, especially if you're working with something like D gain, where increasing the value too much can smoke a motor. There are some developments underway for the future that will allow the Tyrannus to communicate with, well, beta flight. Sorry, clean flight folks. I don't know that anyone's developing this for you. Maybe they are. But they will allow the Tyrannus to communicate with beta flight via the telemetry channel and actually know what the values are so that when you're doing in-flight adjustments, the Tyrannus could even read them out to you. That's something for the future. For now, if you're doing in-flight adjustments, when you flip up, the value is increasing. If you're listening for the beeps, you can actually count how much it's increased. But if you're too far away to hear the beeps or if you don't have a buzzer on your copter, it's just a matter of feel. You just flip it up and you count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And when you're done, you see you center the stick or you center the switch again and you see where you're at. So how do you set this up? I, I've got... If we go to the receiver tab, I have got two aux channels set up for in-flight adjustments. One of them is aux 2, and one of them is aux 4. Okay. In my setup, aux 2 is used to select what I'm adjusting, and aux 4 is used to increment or decrement that value. And if you look down at my screen on my Tyrannus, you can see exactly the mixes I have set up to let me do that. Now, for aux 4, it's a simply, I've just set up a mix on the switch so that it follows the switch, low, middle, high. And I've had to set it up with a negative weight to invert the logic so that high goes up and low goes down because the Tyrannus, by default, does it the other direction. The up position is the low value and the down position is the high value. I want it the other way, so when I flip this up, you'll see that the channel goes to the top end of the range, and that means the value will be increasing. And when I flip the switch down, it goes to the low end of the range. That means the value will be decreasing. And of course, in the center, the value will not be increasing or decreasing. In order to make that happen with the Tyrannus, at least, you have to have a negative 100% weight, which inverts the value of the channel. Now, I've got something a little more complicated going on 
for aux 2. And you can see here, I've got two switches here, one with a 22 weight and one with a 66 weight. And you're thinking, what the heck is that? Well, that's my secret technique for being able to change all the values using just two aux channels. And rather than explain that to you now, I'm going to refer you back to <laughs> June 2014. This was before I discovered RC groups. This was before I was on YouTube. This was, I was really new in the hobby. And in fact, I was a little bit out of place on the flight test forums as much as I, I love and respect flight test. Uh, I was a little out of place because I was posting all these <laughs> sort of in-depth things and I think it was not the right audience for me. Uh, but um, here's a, a post that I made there. I'll link the post down in the video description and you can read about what I'm doing here. Tyrannus Advanced Programming Switch Multiplexing. If you don't follow all this and for those of you who don't have a computer science or mathematics background this may be a little bit difficult to follow you can simply copy what i've done into your tyrannus this is the key thing one of the switches has a weight of 22 percent and an offset of negative 78 one of the switches has a weight of 66 percent and an offset of 66 percent and here's what that looks like in the tyrannus there's one screen. The key ones here are the source, which is the switch, the weight, and the offset. Everything else is defaults. And here's the other one. Now, what, what does that all do? Let me show you what that does. It'll make sense when you see it. If we look at the receiver tab and we look at aux2, let me show you what it does. If I put both switches in the up position and I move just this switch, I get three values. If I move this switch to the middle position, I get three separate values. And if I move that switch to the down position, I get three more values. So I'm essentially, if you think about how you count uh, 1, 2, 3, 11, 12, 13, 21, 22, 23, that's essentially what I'm doing here. This switch is all the way in the up position, I count 1, 2, 3. In the middle position, I'm counting 11, 12, 13. And in the down position, I'm counting 21, 22, 23. I've essentially just, this is the tens digit and this is the ones digit in my counting system. If that makes sense to you, great. If it doesn't make sense to you, just nod, just nod and go, oh yeah, very interesting. I'm essentially getting nine different positions, nine different channel positions out of these two switches. And here is what that lets me do. If I go to in-flight adjustments, what I can do is I can say, when channel aux2 is in this position, yeah, when channel aux2 is in this position, I am going to be adjusting, let's say this is going to be pitch P. And the channel that is going to control what direction this is moving is going to be aux4. Aux4 is always going to be the channel that makes the value adjust up, up or down. When Aux2 is in this position, let's say that we're adjusting pitch I gain. Again, using, the, using Aux4 to control whether the value is increasing or decreasing. When the switch is in this position, we're going to use Aux2. And that is going to be adjusting pitch D gain. Again, using aux4 to control whether it's going up or down. So now, using this, this switch, I can adjust pitch P, I, or D in flight. And then, watch this. I put this switch to the middle position. Oh, now I got three more values. You see? And I can keep doing that for roll and for yaw. And here's what that looks like. Now I'm going to cheat because I actually have a copy paste of the configuration that I use on most of my copters. If I just go to the CLI and paste that in, and yes, I will put this in the video description for you. And then I save. And then I'm going to need to disconnect and reconnect. And go to the in-flight adjustments. Now look what I got. When this switch is all the way up, I am adjusting pitch P, roll P, or roll, or a yaw P. So this switch selects the axis, pitch, roll, or yaw. 
This switch selects the parameter, P, I, or D. And this switch makes the parameter go up or down. Watch what happens here. Watch the, let's see, we're on pitch and P, P gain. So if I, pitch P gain is 40. If I hold this up, let me actually see a flashing LED. No, I don't see it. Oh, well. Okay, now I'll, put, I'll center this and I'll refresh. And you can see that roll, hmm, roll P has gone up. Am I accidentally on the roll axis? I must accidentally be on the roll axis. Let's go up some more. And as I refresh, you can see that value is increasing. There you go. That's how to set up in-flight adjustments so that you can adjust all three of your main parameters using just three switches on your controller. When you're done, you need to save the values. If you make these in-flight changes and you just unplug your battery, they will be lost. And the idea there is that if you really screw things up, <laughs> you just unplug the battery and you're back to your good state. And the way you do that, and I'm not going to do this right now because I don't actually want to save the things I've done here. But the way you do that is you push the sticks down and out. So down and out. That's the command. And the copter, again, if you have a beeper, will make a little beep indicating that that's been saved. Adjusting PIDs is not the only thing you can do with in-flight adjustments, though. If you look at this pull-down, you can see you could do a lot. There's a lot of things you can adjust. You can increase or decrease your RC rate or your RC expo, throttle expo. You can adjust the pitch and roll rates together, the yaw rate. You can adjust the pitch and roll PIDs together or separately. And you might wonder why you want to adjust them together. Some people like to do a rough tune by adjusting the pitch and roll P and D together, and then separately they'll fine tune them. It used to be that you couldn't tune them separately. That didn't even used to exist, and now it's been added in. Another thing Pete, you might want to do is select the rate profile. Now you cannot select PID profiles. If we go to the PID tuning tab, you see we've got a PID profiles. Where is the PID? Pro Sorry, I don't know clean flight very well. Is it in the receiver? Where is it? I don't, it's not here. Oh, well. You can't change PID profiles using in-flight adjustments. And the reason for that is that the uh, the, the gyro, the, the whole flight controller basically needs to reset when you change the PID profiles. And it doesn't want to let you do that in-flight. But you can change rate profiles. So you can have a switch that controls high or low rates for freestyle or racing. And many, many other things. The gist of it is the same. Use one switch or multiple switches, multiplexed if you're an advanced user. Use one switch to choose what parameter you're adjusting and use another switch to choose whether you're raising or lowering the value. And then when you're done, sticks down and out, and that will save the values. Well, that's it. Now you know how to use in-flight adjustments, and you have my secret. You have my secret setup for adjusting all the PIDs. Input this command and set your uh, channels up the way I showed you here in this flight test post, and you will be ready to go with in-flight adjustments and PID tuning. That's all for now. Happy flying.